Uh, we are Amala Vida. We are a life, health and wellness, leadership, and career coaching company. And my name is Justice. I am a relationship strategist on the team. And what that means is when you schedule a time to have a conversation with someone on our team, generally speaking, you'll end up on my calendar for a half hour complimentary conversation where I'll get to know you and your current situation and kind of how that pertains to your goals. And then I'm going to make a recommendation of a coach or coaches on our team that are most appropriately suited to help you accomplish those based on their backgrounds, personalities, and skill sets. So with that being said, if anybody has anything that's top of mind that they want to maybe have a conversation about, I'm going to drop my link right here to my calendar. Um, it's first come, first serve. And if you indicate that you came from a webinar, you get your first session free. So just something to keep in mind as you're considering pursuing coaching as a resource to help you accomplish your goals. And then with that being said, um, we are joined today with John. So I'm going to pass it over to you, John. There you go. Thank you, Justice. You are an outstanding hype man. Thank you for the incredibly warm welcome. Uh, everybody, it's great to see uh, everyone. I know some people here are some faces and names that I recognize and I have spoken with before. And I think a few of you have probably heard me babble on a webinar once or twice. Uh, some of you are very new, in which case, welcome. Uh, you are in for a wild ride because I tend to take these webinars in odd directions. But today we are going to be diving in uh, on a topic that I, I absolutely love, which is changing this horrible, horrible job hunt procedure that a lot of people have been stuck with. I don't know if anyone here has kind of pulled their head out from under the rocks uh, in the last few months, but it is a wild, wild job market out there right now. Uh, it, it's absolutely incredible. We are seeing things that I have not seen in a long time, and I've been in the world of recruitment and hiring uh, for, for a long time. So there's a, a lot of, and it's, it's, there's spikes up and down. One of the things that I'm noticing is that there are huge mismatches in industry. In a lot of my life and career, I've noticed that employment trends tended to stay even. Either everyone was hiring or everyone wasn't hiring. And that's what it tends to be. Right now, very spiky, right? So there's, there's industries that are hiring like mad and industries that are not hiring at all. We're seeing a huge disruption in the regular working environment. And this is compounded by the fact that the job market and the tools of the job market are different than they've ever been. And a lot of people are using these uh, tools very differently and both job seekers and hirers are using these tools very differently. And so what I wanna give you here today is some new ways of seeing and using the job market to your advantage. And I wanna get very tactical. I don't wanna stay really high-minded philosophical. I'll start with a little bit of that just so you understand where I'm coming from, but I'm gonna dive in and what we're gonna do for a lot of this webinar is we're going to actually go onto LinkedIn together. We're going to use that as the basis for some of our searching. And I'm gonna show you how to really maximize on uh, LinkedIn as a, a tool for you. By the way, I'm assuming that most people on this webinar already have a LinkedIn profile. If you don't, that's okay. You won't necessarily need it, you can still follow along. But if you do, it matters 0% what is currently on your profile. Because what we're going to be doing today is primarily using LinkedIn as an information mine. So if your profile is beat up, if you haven't updated it in forever, if it doesn't have a profile picture, don't worry about it. That stuff can come down the line. It's not necessary for what we're going to do today. So I'm just giving everyone that little heads up because in about two, three minutes, we're all gonna get on LinkedIn together. And I want you to, as much as possible, kind of split your attention between following along with me and maybe doing some of this on LinkedIn yourself. Uh, and you're gonna be giving me some information, you're gonna be shouting some things out, you're going to the chat, maybe coming off mute, uh, but we're going to, we're gonna start from there. So the first just sort of high-minded philosophical thing that I wanna explain about the current job market is that more than anything else, the way I would describe the modern job market of the last few years is noisy. It is filled with useless noise. It's not that there's not enough information, it's that there's so much information that most of it can't be used and most of it is dead cold leads. And I know if any of you have ever, have been on the job on the last few years, you have almost certainly encountered uh, this scenario. You search for a particular type of role, maybe type of industry, type of company, you find job ads that are related to that, but then they're dead, or, oh, we hired someone for that months ago, or 
uh, we, we, we already filled that role and we never took down the job posting, or I don't even know how that job posting got up because we never posted it on that job board to begin with. This is because so many of these job boards and job indexes, uh, they scrape and pull information from each other and you end up with one company posts a job in April, they fill it in May, the job postings are still floating around in December, right? This happens all the time. And there's not a good way for you to tell that. Here's the other thing that's, that's noisy about these is I can find out some information from a job ad, but there's a lot that I can't find out. And the information that you can't find out is the information that most people, most of my clients, most of the people I interact with on these kind of webinars tell me that they want. So they, they want uh, to know about company culture. They wanna know about management style. They wanna know about career path. They wanna know about the team they're going to work on. All things that you cannot find out at all from a job ad. From a job ad, you can find out what somebody thinks the title and responsibilities are going to be. And I say somebody thinks because people are wrong a lot. I also want you to please always keep in mind that the people that write job ads are most of the time guessing. Uh, so they're not great, accurate sources of information. Um, and yes, so, so Carla just mentioned uh, jobs are rotating and repeating so much. I wish jobs closed when the person was hired. Exactly. So many of these jobs uh, don't have a, a a sunset clause on them. They don't end unless someone actually goes in and takes them down. And if they plaster the job everywhere, then it, it may stay up everywhere. They may not even remember every last place it got posted. And some of them do scrape, um, meaning some job boards just pull jobs from other job boards. So even if you took it down from the job board you posted it to, as a hiring manager, you might not even know that this other job board was an aggregator and pulled your job listing from somewhere else. It's awful. Um, they're not just, I mean, it, and Jenny says they're generic. They're not even just generic. They're copycat. Most hiring managers, and I say this as someone who used to be one, who used to write these job ads for a living, um, and who has trained and coached a lot of these hiring managers, uh, they, they guess or they copy paste. Meaning if I am, I'm a mid-level manager in a company and, and someone above me has told me, I need to hire a new uh, marketing associate, go post a job ad for a marketing associate. They say, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done that before. So what do I do? I go search for marketing associate. I find other job ads. I copy and paste them. I change the company name. Uh, and I maybe add one bullet point at the bottom and clutter it up. And that's it. And that's what happens. And so sometimes you see job ads that have three different company names listed inside the ad because several people did that and they missed company names when they were swapping or there's bullet points repeated because people were just adding things to the bottom without even reading it. This happens all the time. All of this is to say, searching for your next major career move on your average job index board is not an effective strategy. There's so much noise. The next layer beyond that is even if you found something, even if you go through all of that and, and think about how many hours you've wasted to find one diamond in the rough, you find a job ad that by some miracle is recent, is accurate, uh, great. Do you know how many other people clicked apply now? And you have no window of opportunity. You have no way to stand out from the crowd. You're sending a very generic resume through a very generic portal. And I say a generic resume because even if your resume isn't very generic, it becomes generic by the time it goes through the applicant tracking system and gets parsed and your formatting gets lost and it, it scrambles something incorrectly and puts things out of order in the uh, template that the parser system sends to the hiring manager. And now they get a stack of 400 very generic looking resumes of which yours is one. All of this just means it's noisy on both ends. It's noisy for you as a job seeker. And for a hiring manager, it's noisy. Uh, you post a job ad up, let's say it goes on Indeed or Monster or something like that. And I get 400, 500 of these templated generic looking PDFs that the system spits out for me into my inbox. That's noisy to me too, because a lot of those are 
uh, not even people that really want that job or know what it is. It's people whose strategy is just to go through and click apply now or easy apply on every single job on the board and go with the shotgun method, which does not work, by the way. Don't do the shotgun method. Um, so, uh, and I'm going to, oh, I see a, um, a chat note that came up there. Um, oh, well, please note how to um, listen to recording. Yes, so after this is over, everyone that has registered for uh, this webinar, whether you're here or not, um, Justice is going to be sending out a recording of this. And you'll be able to watch all of this um, live later and save it. And if just the sound of my dulcet tones puts you to sleep easily at night, you'll have it accessible in time you need. Just in case you don't want to listen to me live, putting you to sleep every night. So all that being said, what if we had a different way? What if we had a curated, cultivated information stream of really relevant information to you that pointed you in the direction of accurate information, recent information, and information that was very much targeted to you? That's what we're going to build out today. We're going to build it out together. And I'm going to show you how. And LinkedIn is going to be the primary engine of it. This works extremely well, but it's very odd if you've never encountered it before. So you have to take a little leap of faith with me and do some of this together. If you, again, if you have never been on LinkedIn in your life, that's okay. Follow along. It'll be very easy to set up later. If you do have LinkedIn, great. Log in and we'll, we'll do something together. Out there in the world are people trying to hire. So I want that message to resonate. And I want that to be in your minds as truth. And I'm, I'm telling you this as someone who absolutely helps both sides here, right? So I am a coach, not only for the job seekers, but I have plenty of people on the hiring side that hire me to consult and help them as well. The information asymmetry, the noise of the market is hurting both sides. The hiring side is just as confused, but they're not benefiting from this. Right? I know some people, when you're feeling very frustrated by the job hunt, you sort of get this feeling that, it's a zero sum game. And if I'm losing, the hiring side is winning and they're laughing maniacally as if they're not, they're really just as frustrated because there's just so much noise in the middle. They are trying to hire. And right now, honestly, they're trying to hire desperately. They're not having enough success because this is a complaint I get. Someone, the reason that my clients reach out to me for the hiring consultation is, oh, I put a job ad up on Indeed and I can't hire anybody. Well, it's really the exact same complaint that my job seeker clients are making, but just from the opposite side. So we are going to create a curated information stream where those sorts of opportunities are constantly being presented to you. So I am now going to, um, I'm now going to switch over to sharing my screen on LinkedIn and show everyone how to do this. But here's what I want uh, everyone to do while I'm setting up my screen share. I want some folks to throw into the chat uh, maybe industries or concepts or types of work that they might be interested in. Don't worry about being super specific, right? But you know, if, if you're trying to work in healthcare, throw healthcare in there. If you're trying to work in education, throw that, just throw that in there. Um, just so I have a few live samples and it's not all stuff that I'm making up. And then also, please um, let me know if there is anyone that can't see my screen share or, or is having difficulty um, spotting it. Feel free to throw notes into the chat if that um, if that happens. Okay, um, I am going to, and I'm going to go through a couple of these. So I'm going to pick a really um, easy one in the beginning to show the concept, and then I'll dive in and show how it can apply to a few different of these. So, all right, Molly. Molly writes marketing writing, editing, I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna start with Mark. Okay, so here we are in LinkedIn. Very, very basic stuff. This is not gonna be necessarily a LinkedIn tutorial overall, but I just wanna make sure everyone knows the very, very basic bones of this. Um, everyone has a profile in LinkedIn. And a lot of the advice out there is that, oh, you have, oh, it's all centered around the profile, how to make your profile more appealing, how to do this. A lot of that advice is great. We have tutorials about that on the Amelita website. Go watch them, they're great. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. If your profile has nothing on it, this will all work because we're gonna be creating some inbound information here today. So don't worry about the profile. What we really wanna see is the homepage. This is where the, the meat and potatoes happens. Because I 
work with a wide variety of clients and I always end up following um, a few different things for each client. I have a very varied and interesting stream of information aimed at me all the time. Most of the time, my clients will ask me, do you know anybody in XYZ industry? And I, I do, because I just have this really weird and varied LinkedIn from all the people I've worked with. Uh, let's talk about how to make that. LinkedIn has, I know a lot of people don't know this, but LinkedIn has a very robust hashtag system. And for anyone that doesn't know what a hashtag is, it's where we start with that, that pound symbol. You know, uh, people in my age bracket or older might know that as the, the pound symbol. Fun fact, the actual name of that symbol is the octothorpe, which I bet you didn't know, but there's your interesting trivia bit for the day. But we start with that symbol and you can kind of see the things that I tend to look up more uh, often in your tips resume, my job. But let's just start with marketing, okay? Now, by starting with that pat, uh, pound sign, and then I search for this, we find uh, the hashtag marketing yeah, marketing. Um, we find the marketing hashtag, and there's a big symbol up here. Right here, this button, we are clicking follow. Why? Because now we are following not just people we know on LinkedIn. We are getting in our information stream everybody that posts with the marketing hashtag. This is very helpful. If we are someone that's trying to uh, learn more about marketing, see more marketing opportunities, and work in the marketing industry, then having people talking to us about marketing outside of the people we already know is extremely valuable. Now, the marketing hashtag has 20 million followers. It's a very prolific hashtag. Not every hashtag will have 20 million, but it doesn't have to. Uh, a smaller hashtag just means a more niche industry, and it can still work very well. So let's look at what's appearing in marketing. Now, this person here, I'm, I'm just going to pick the very first one. This is uh, Jesse Boland, if I'm pronouncing the name correct. This right here that says there's a second connection, that means this is not a connection of mine on LinkedIn. Um, connections of yours are firsts. A second means we have at least one connection in common, and a third means we don't. So we might have someone in common, but Jesse is not a connection of mine. However, Jesse has posted something. And what we'll see is if we look at the whole post here, at some point, Jesse put, hashtag marketing in his post. That is why this appeared under the marketing hashtag and why we're seeing it by following the marketing hashtag. You can do this. When we get to the point where, um, uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, someone says, I'm not seeing the option to follow. Do, are you seeing this right here? Like the, the hashtag marketing pop up? So then try this, do, type this in again. And instead of hitting enter, click on the thing that drops down. Sometimes that changes it. Uh, and if you see a list of posts that use it, you can also try to click on this, right? So click on the hyperlink. There you go. Great. And now you'll be able to follow it. Um, perfect. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going I'm to look here. So here's a post, right, that this person made. Uh, and now, Let's talk about how to really squeeze all the juice out of this. So the first thing is, let's look at who Jesse is, right? The tagline here is leading growth at Ironclad. That's a marketing headline. So this person works in marketing, which makes sense. This person's posting up the marketing hashtag. Of course, they probably work in marketing, right? So I'm going to take this. I'm going to do a little right click. I'm going to open this in the new tab. And I want to just stress here, I have not yet even left the very first post under the hashtag. This post was made 24 minutes ago. So I go over here, I look at Jesse. Jesse's from San Francisco. Uh, Jesse is a leading growth at Ironclad. So if I, if I kind of scroll down, um, oh, head of growth at Ironclad, yep, he's in marketing, right? I can kind of see a little bit about where he's been before. And every one of these, you're gonna hear me use a term uh, called a thread. This is interchangeable with the term rabbit hole. Uh, a thread is anything I can tug on for more information. So you'll notice how when I started over here, I right-clicked on Jesse and I opened Jesse up. This is a new thread. Well, I can do the same thing with Ironclad. I could open that in a new tab. Now I'm learning about Ironclad. And I can do this endlessly. I'm not going to do every single one of these. But I will show what I will do with them. And if I was you and I was learning about marketing, I would open all of these. So guess what? Hey, here's that follow button again. Okay. 
If I'm interested in Ironclad, if Ironclad has struck my fancy at all, I click follow again. And by the way, it's, it's free to follow. Uh, it doesn't take permission. So I don't have a problem even that I'm doing this live. I'm, now I'm following Ironclad, so they're going to show up in my feed. Uh, at some point, two months from now, I'll be like, why did I follow them? And I'll remember this. But if you want to learn, it's free to follow. If I go back to Jesse, guess what? Free to follow. You don't need anyone's permission to follow. You also should definitely not feel as though you, you don't want to follow somebody because that's exactly what they want. If somebody is posting on LinkedIn, they want you to follow them. I know some people have a little bit of introversion and they're worried, is it weird, is it creepy? No, it's what they want. This is his personal marketing, he, he wants this. So uh, so now I, I thought, and if I wanted to, I could send a connection too, but you don't have to. You don't have to send a connection request yet, you can just follow. Now, everything Jesse posts is going to show up in my feed, which might be pretty helpful because look, I've already had uh, the, the head of marketing at this company has risen to the top. Now, the reason this is valuable is someone that's the head of marketing at a company, when that company is hiring, that person's going to post it. That person's going to share it. That's going to show up in my feed. And it's going to show up in my feed faster and more accurately than when I find it on indeed.com three months later. So now I'm starting to cultivate this stream of information where the most relevant, most recent information shows up all the time. Okay, let's back out of some of these threads. We haven't left this post yet, right? We're still on here. And now I've already found a company that I'm following. I've already found a person that I'm following. Let's go even deeper. First off, the content of the post, which I'm kind of brought, glossing over and ignoring, is very valuable because, hey, this is somebody who, if I'm trying to you know, work more in the marketing world, this is a, a, a marketing leader. They probably know some stuff, right? So maybe I want to read the content of the post. But I'm going to also go down here to our other little secret gold mine right here. Secret gold mine is this number of people that have interacted with this post. And I'll tell you why this is a gold mine. If I search for people or companies, again, we don't know what's dead. We don't know what's just, somebody might have a LinkedIn profile they haven't logged into in eight years. I don't know if that's a warm lead for me. I don't know if that's a good networking contact, right? But right here, this number, all of these people, have a couple of things that make them very valuable to me. First off, let's take a look. Hey, uh, growth at CanDo. Uh, again, it's a marketing person. Um, uh, account executive marketing. Oh, SEO and digital marketing and growth leader. Founder at Yep. Okay, great. This person's in marketing. So these are all people in my world. I know two things about these people. One, I know they at least share some interest with me. Again, I look at these, these taglines. They are primarily marketing people, right? I also know that every single one of these people was on LinkedIn in the last 24 minutes, which is something that you don't know about people when you search for them by their profile. There's nothing that tells you when the last time someone logged in was. So now I know that these are all live people. So if I open this list up again, here, uh, another Jesse, I can do the same thing. I right click, and I start a new thread. I go down a new rabbit hole. Now, when I go over to this tab, here's Jesse. Jesse lives in Sacramento, SEO and digital marketing growth leader. Great. And I know they're an active person, which kind of bears out here. When I look at their activity, look, look at this stuff. They're posting things, right? I can see what JCT growth is. I can start a new rabbit hole of going to that. Oh, before that, they, were, they did SEO with Y Design Group, right? So now I'm following these. You could spend an hour, right? Not a long time, an hour going down these different rabbit holes and following 50 to 100 new sources. And a source is anything from a hashtag to a person to a company, anything that's going to put content into your feed. And notice, by the way, this is why I said you don't have to have anything in your profile because none of this is required you to do anything yet, right? This is all inbound information. So if you don't have a profile, you could have done this. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, you are getting all these information sources so that now, after an hour of this, let's say, so you do this on a lunch break, right? We're not talking a huge project here. You do this on a lunch break. When you pop back into your LinkedIn feed, right? when I finally go back home, now my feed is going to be filled with the marketing Jessies of the world, right? Who are showing up 
uh, with, with content over and over again. And when that content shows up, that content is going to be about, look at the growth that our company is doing. Look at this new job that we're hiring for. Look at this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Information that you really want to see that stays relevant, that draws you to new opportunities, that draws you to new people, totally changes the amount or the, the direction of the time you're going to spend on your career path. The biggest benefit to this is not just the recency of information. It's not just the relevance of information. It is that everything you do here pushes you toward something. It's not just a binary yes or no. When you go onto a job board and you find a hundred job posts, again, most of which are garbage, you apply to every one of them, let's say you send a nice, well-written personalized cover letter to all 100, however long that takes, you submit your resume. For each one of those, you either somehow strike gold and actually get it, or you get nothing. There's no consolation prize, right? Like there's no secondary effect where you get something that moves you in the right direction. None of the hiring managers that send you rejection emails send a rejection email that comes with, oh, but by the way, try these guys, or oh, reach out to my friend. It doesn't work like that. It's just these binary yes, no. Whereas everything here is directional. Everything here creates new threads. I followed Jesse. Jesse created new threads because on Jesse's posts, there are more people that like them. I can see who Jesse has endorsed. I can see um, look, who endorsed Jesse for SEO, 67 people. Great. Those those might be interesting threads. These are all people I don't know. It's all information sources that I don't know. Once you've gone as far as you want to go, by the way, marketing is not the only hashtag. Even in, in this, you're marketing advice, marketing automation, marketing and sales. You can really keep going. Any, any topic in the world you can put in here. Now, let me real quick, just jump in the chat. Um, Carrie, thank you. That sounds super helpful with group as well. Exactly. If you don't know something about a new industry, you could become an expert really quickly on it with this method you can find out who the players are who the big movers are what trends are happening in a given industry you can even find new hashtags because a lot of times someone will post something and then uh they'll use four hashtags so you follow the post because of the marketing hashtag so i actually want to go a little bit deeper um and, and Molly says, with something as broad as marketing which is a very broad one will i be overwhelmed by the feed uh I don't know if you'll be overwhelmed. That kind of depends on you. But remember, you can pull things back out. You can unfollow people. It's not permanent. If you find that there's a lot of um, things clogging up, go ahead and take it out. But unlike a job board, your LinkedIn feed refreshes, right? The old stuff goes away. So even if there's a lot of information in your feed, it's all going to be only from the past couple of days at any given time. So that's sort of the beauty of this system is that LinkedIn is becoming your personal assistant um, let me click that. Is becoming your personal assistant and, and is curating this information for you. So I'm going to go down um, and find something that maybe is a little bit older. Three and, and marketing is robust. So there's um, things happening really quickly. Let me actually switch to uh, a new one. Um, yes, LinkedIn. We so LinkedIn is constantly it, 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 it's social media, right? So it is constantly refreshing. Um, and clearing out old things. The other thing that LinkedIn is doing, and I'll just tell you kind of how to make the algorithm work for you a little bit. If you interact with something a lot, LinkedIn will show you more. So let's say, so this is where you clicking that like button actually does more than just click like. Um, if I have Sue and Bob, and they're the only two people I follow in my LinkedIn feed. And every time Sue posts something, I click like, and every time Bob um, posts something, I just kind of scroll past it. LinkedIn will show me more of Sue and less of Bob. So if you use uh, that like button to really indicate this was helpful to me, LinkedIn will show you more of that person, more of that source, more of that hashtag. So in this way, um, you, LinkedIn will actually continue to learn from you and give you more of what was most helpful and less of what wasn't helpful at all. So if there's um, a lot of things that you just never clicked on because they didn't see that interesting, even if you don't unfollow it, LinkedIn will kind of weed it out. But look how easy this is here, Mighty Citizen. Look, I just there's a follow buttons right there. Um, so if I come down to here, we go. Uh, sometimes you're going to get ads that are in these news and marketing hashtags, but that's not even necessarily bad. 
Um, I'm going to jump back into the chat here and see what's the, a few that I, I picked marketing because it's kind of a, um, I know it's very broad, so it's, it's a lot there, but let's see. Ooh, construction. I'm just going to pick construction because that one seems. All right. So we've got, again, a lot to pick from. I'm going to go with the most basic one construction. It's probably not going to be 20 million. Um, wow. It's actually almost 5 million though. So that's more than I would have guessed from construction. Um, but look what we've got here. So first off, I'm now following the construction hashtag. I'm going to learn about construction. Uh, and we have, uh, okay, so we have Andrew, who's the president at ADM Mechanical, who is sharing a post from ADM Mechanical, um, which gives me a couple things to follow. I can follow Andrew. I can follow ADM Mechanical. Um, I, I got a new hashtag here. I got the project hashtag. Um, here's a, another thing, Dink in North America. I all the oh, this person decided to really be prolific with their hashtags. This might be more than you normally encounter, but if any of these are interested, uh, and look, some of these appear to be very, very niche, air cooled, right? So maybe if that's, I'm going to guess that if I went to air cooled, it would not be a 5 million follower hashtag. Let's see what air cooled looks like. Um, 76, right? Uh, so some of the hashtags are going to be less prolific than others, and that's totally okay. But you, you, you may occasionally hit. A false start or a dead end, but you'll never you'll never hit a dead end to the total process because there'll be so many things to do. Um, but as I'm coming down here, uh, look, one hour ago, eight comments, eighteen reactions. Right, I can go in here and I can just look. Here's here's somebody that works national account manager, sustainability solutions, senior project manager. Right, I can go down these rabbit holes forever. You will never run out of interesting content to find. And when people are posting, the people that are posting are posting the stuff that they want people to hear. They are advertising their companies. Um, and if they're advertising their companies, those companies are growing. LinkedIn uh, is not primarily where companies are going to find customers. It's where they're going to find teammates. So the marketing efforts that are being put here are really being aimed in a career pivoting direction. A few days, that's it, of looking at this. And something that you will come to realize is also the door is wide open for communication. So this is phase one. And all you have to have for this, for phase one, is a free LinkedIn account. By the way, you will never need anything other than a free LinkedIn account. But what I mean is you don't need even to have a profile picture here yet, because all everything you're doing is just creating the information stream. But phase two is you want to interact with that information stream. This is where, hey, now maybe put a profile picture up, put a tagline. Don't, don't go crazy here. I don't want anybody to think that this is something that you need to agonize over and your LinkedIn profile has to be perfect. It, it does not. It has to have enough that you look like a human. The, the bare bones stuff that you really should have is um, a profile picture that is not a selfie. That's the only requirement. It doesn't have to be a professional headshot, just not a selfie. Um, a background photo is great. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can Google free LinkedIn background photos and just get like a nice picture of mountains or a picture of a desk or something and throw it up there. Uh, it doesn't matter. The only reason to have it up there is because the, the gray boring one kind of indicates that you're not real serious. So throw anything up there. And then a tagline. And, and the tagline, some people just use their current title. That's fine. Um, I actually prefer something that's a little bit more call to action, right? A, a tagline that says, um, talk to me about marketing. Talk to me about construction. That's inviting. It's warm. Uh, and it tells people what you're about. You don't need it to be, I mean, this person, president of ADM, sure, if I'm president of the company, it's probably what I'm putting. But my tagline does not say, uh, you know, director of career services at Abla Vida. My tagline says helping people do what they love. So, so you don't have to go fancy. Once you have that, then you can start interacting. And that's 15 minutes. Now you start interacting. You click that like. You click that. Um, you, you click that comment button, right? Let people uh, see you interact, and more of that will start to come back to you. This is where you start to talk to the marketing Jessies or the uh, you know the construction Andrews, and they want you to talk to them. You will see people who are presidents of companies, right? And they're they're posting things that are getting a handful of likes and comments. The door is wide open. They're not posting these things for their health, right? They are posting these things in order to drive 
uh, interaction in order to drive engagement. So you're not bothering somebody by not posting or by posting. You are engaging and they love it and they want it. Um, if you click on some of these common threads, uh, a lot of the time it's going to be the person who made the original post, right? See, inter interacting, um, they will interact back with you. So absolutely start to engage, start to like, start to comment. And this is where it becomes that non-binary. Like I said, if you apply to 100 jobs, you get 100 no's and none of them were helpful, none of them were directional. If you talk to 100 people on LinkedIn, even if none of those 100 conversations immediately became a job, every one of them gave you direction. Every one of them gave you advice, pointed you in a certain direction. The conversations themselves are visible. Uh, you'll notice that if I go back in here to uh, our marketing, Jesse, right? When I go down to the activity section and I click see all activity, I see everything Jesse does. I see, oh, that he liked this post. I see that he made this post. I see that he liked someone's comment. This is great. And look, Jesse, who is the leader of growth at Ironclad, what kind of content is he probably interacting with? Probably content that I care about if I'm in marketing. So here's 274 people from that have all been on LinkedIn in the last 19 hours that all care about something, et cetera. So th these are really helpful threads. Let me address some of these uh, comments here real quick. Um, is there a way to target and follow on LinkedIn opportunities for digital nomads? Absolutely. Not only um, you follow that culture, right? You can follow hashtags for remote work. You follow other people that are leading the way on being digital nomads. Um, so for instance, since I happen to know a really awesome digital nomad, I mean, I'm biased, but Kristen's amazing. Uh, remote work advocate, right? So anything that Kristen is following or Kristen is posting is probably going to be pretty relevant. And you find other people like that and you follow those rabbit holes. Um, oh, and I like uh, Jay Smith post. I like following recruiters. Bless you. I love following recruiters. They are gold mines of information. Of course they are, right? Now I've been a recruiter and I will tell you that posting an ad on a job board as a recruiter is so frustrating. We really try to do it as little as possible. If I can find the people to connect with my client company or my employer via a more organic method like this, of course I'm going to do it. Uh, it, it it's better for me in the same reason it's better for you, right? We just get to know each other better. We cut out a lot of the noise in the middle uh, and recruiters are always going to post their stuff on LinkedIn. And recruiters also tend to work in niche industries. Believe it or not, most recruiters are not open-ended generic recruiters that hire everywhere. Most recruiters tend to specialize in industry. So once you have targeted a particular industry or sector of the economy and you find certain independent recruiters or recruiting firms in that industry, they're going to be that industry, right? So you follow them and you start to see a lot of things, but you can talk to them. You can interact. You can just have a conversation. If you see a, a job posting on a job board, you might think to yourself, well, I would love to just five minutes chat with the recruiter that posted this to get a little bit more information, get maybe some background, maybe be able to little stalk a little bit and see what the company is like. I wish I could do that, but you really can't. But that same recruiter posted on LinkedIn Look at the gold mine of information that you have access to in order to follow that. So absolutely. Um, no, nothing that you follow shows up in your activity feed. That's the other beauty of following. You can follow 100 things. Nobody, nobody knows what you follow. Um, so uh, anyway, Jason, Jay Smith again says, my job isn't related to where I'm trying to go, so I don't put it in my headline. Exactly. I, I see this all the time on resumes, LinkedIn. Where my clients ask me is they say, uh, or I'll, I'll ask them, hey, I, I noticed you want to pivot out of this industry. Why are you putting so much of it in your LinkedIn or your resume? They say, well, I've done a lot of it. Like, yeah, but you don't want to do it anymore. You don't have to put, you don't have to put anything. Resume, LinkedIn, all this stuff, these are marketing documents. You control them. You don't have to put anything in there that you don't want to. Uh, keep that in mind, even when you're picking temporary jobs. Some people I know uh, really need income or cash flow right now, but they're afraid to take something because they say, oh, it's outside of the path I want, and then I'll have to put it on my resume. Who said you have to put it on your resume? Those are marketing documents. Now, you, you can't go the other direction. You can't put something on your resume that you didn't do, <laughs> but you don't have to put everything that you did do on there. It's, it's a selective process. Um, so 
if a person comes up, Samantha is asking, if a person comes up and they've shared a job posting, would you reach out to them via LinkedIn and send them a message? Most of the time, I prefer to talk to them publicly. Now, if you have a reason that you need to be kind of keeping things on the down low, it's fine. But the reason I would reach out to them publicly is because publicly, A, they're far more likely to respond. B, you're getting visibility for all the other people that are hiring. That one recruiter posts that job ad, great. But if you post, if you comment on their post, there's a hundred other people that see it. There's a hundred other people that even later when they're doing their due diligence on you see, oh, Samantha was very nice. She was polite. She was forthcoming. She asked good questions, et cetera. It shows up later for people. It leads to other opportunities. If you are going to message someone on LinkedIn, I will give everyone a little bit of advice. Before you message someone on LinkedIn, engage with their public content a little bit. Like something, comment on something, even if it's just something as simple as saying, congrats on an announcement post or great job or, or oh, this is cool. Where'd you come up with this? Um, do a little bit of that first, because then when you send them a message, you're not cold outreaching. People are wary about cold outreaches, maybe rightly so, right? They don't want somebody showing up and trying to invite them into their pyramid scheme. So if you've engaged a little bit publicly, that sends a very strong signal that you are a real person. You are not going to be trying to sell them on some weird thing, uh, and they're much more likely to respond. So if you are going to send someone a message and you want the content of that message to be a little private, at least engage with them on something else first so that your name has showed up on their notifications a few times. Uh, so um, I, I absolutely, so expressing enthusiasm, and, and this is uh, Terry asking, what would you say if you're commenting on public, express enthusiasm for the role? Absolutely express enthusiasm, say, oh, this is really interesting, asking a question, um, you know, that, that's something that's really neat. It's also where you help each other out too. If you see something, that uh, is a really interesting role for somebody that you know, tagging that person in the post like, hey, John Smith, look at this. It's a power move for a lot of reasons. Look how helpful you look. The recruiter will tend to thank you because you're promoting their stuff. John Smith thanks you and thinks of you later. I mean, so that's a great move. So always help each other out because it's really a rising tide lifts all boats in that sense. Um, but absolutely just saying like, oh, this is really interesting or, um, you know, oh, this company's really neat. I just saw this. Or, or even because we have all these connected threads, right? You don't even have to comment directly on that post. Let's say we've got John Smith, the recruiter, and he's posting on LinkedIn that ABC company, which is one of his client companies, is hiring. You can now follow these rabbit holes. You don't have to post comment on that. You could go to ABC company and just look at all their normal stuff. Like ABC company, proud to announce this new initiative. You can comment on that. Wow, congrats, this is gonna be really great for the community. I'm so excited to see this. Positivity. You could comment on something else of John Smith the recruiter is where he posts something else. And you you again you tag in a friend of yours and say, Oh, you know, check this out, Susan. And now you're just friendly and John Smith the recruiter likes you because you're helping him out. All of those things then build the network, they build the connection, they make it more likely that you're gonna be able to reach out. They even help you down the line when you apply. And I think to myself, uh, you know, you're, you're reaching out, Carrie, and I, I see a resume pop up with Carrie's name. I think, Carrie, I know that name. Oh, she's common. She's engaged with us on social a lot. You know, she really is, is very positive and interacts with us. Oh, great. Yeah, I definitely want to talk shortlist her. It all leads into very positive community building. Um, and yes, uh, Jay Smith, when you say respond publicly, yeah, just posting out here in the world. Um, and yes, you don't have to say too much. You don't have to say, this is very exciting because I'm trying to leave my terrible job with my horrible boss who I hate. I guess you don't have to go you can tell your life story out here, but just finding those other ways to share that positivity. Um, and yes, if it's a hiring manager, absolutely. Hiring managers will often be posting their own roles directly. Great. Now, now you have someone that, that is very invested in finding the right person. And guess what? That hiring manager, if they are not a full-time recruiter, they're also running a department, right? They also have their own job. They are tapped. They don't have time to look at 400 resumes. They are desperate for people to shortlist themselves. And this is the way to do it, is by being just a positive member of their online neighborhood. And now, okay, well, I have 400 resumes to look through, but Carrie or Samantha has just shown up. They've just shown up in, in that post. They were positive. They were friendly. Um, when I did a real quick 
five minute e-stalk of them and went to their profile. I saw nothing but positivity. I saw nothing but them saying nice things to other people. Uh, great, call them. So absolutely. Now, there are lots of things you can do more than this. Um, I'm gonna have, when Justin sends out our recap email, I'm gonna have him send out uh, an a article that I wrote about how to maximize the liking, commenting, sharing, tagging game, which we didn't talk about as much on this call. This is more about the information building, uh, but there is a methodology to how frequently to comment, to build out the network, to make these opportunities come. But I wanna share a little anecdote of how valuable that is. One of my clients, it was only last year, uh, he was not a social media person. And I bet there's probably plenty of people on this call that would describe themselves that way. Not a social media person, that this is an alien world to them. They don't necessarily uh, feel super comfortable with this at first, but I walked him through this process and he said, well, I love this. He said, well, I'm not paying you to ignore your advice. So I'll do it, even though it was very much outside of his comfort zone. He did it, he started to engage very shortly, about I think less than two months. He, we got on one of our sessions and he said, I'm really excited to have this interview for exactly the job that I want coming up. I said, oh, that's great. You didn't even tell me you applied to anything. He said, I didn't apply to anything. They reached out to me. I've been doing this. I've been doing this network building. I've been doing exactly what you said. They reached out. They invited me for an interview. He got that job. I said, this is awesome. Don't stop. That was my biggest piece of advice. I said, there's going to be this impulse. Oh, I landed the job. Let me stop. No, keep it going. This is an eternal thing you do. This is something you do, whether you're working, not working, you keep doing this because it continues to build you as an expert in your industry. It continues to open up new opportunities. It means that in six years, 10 years, when you want to pivot or change jobs again, you're not suddenly rebuilding from scratch. It's much easier. So he did. He kept at it. Six months later, he got headhunted from that job into another one and almost doubled his salary because he continued to be this networking uh, expert in his industry. And it's so easy to do. So absolutely keep up with this. It is so, so valuable. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick it back just, I wanna leave a little bit of time for some things like Q&A, a little bit of chat, um, but I'm gonna kick it back to Justice just to kind of make sure we cross all our T's and dot our I's uh, and wrap things up here. And, and he talks about a little bit about what we need to talk about, but then I'm gonna come back to the floor for some Q&A. And of course, I made this very broad because I have to make sure that it can apply to a lot of different people. But when I do this one-on-one -on -one with clients, we go deep. We go deep into their specific industry. We talk about the challenges, the roadblocks that might be unique to the things that they're trying to investigate. We craft messaging together. We evaluate opportunities. We really create this machine together in a way that is much more nuanced uh, and not as chunky as kind of a big version. So Justice, let me kick it back over to you for a little bit so that I can catch my breath and have a drink of water. And then we'll come back to the Q&A. Absolutely. Thank you so much, John. There was a lot of really good takeaways here. Um, if anybody found interest and would like to explore having more conversations with John, as I mentioned, you know, John, you are currently taking on some clients. So anybody wants to have a conversation with me, I would love to have that. I will post my link one more time. Um, if anybody has any interest and, in, you know, seeing some of the other videos that we've done in the past, here is our YouTube channel that has previous vi um, videos ranging from all different types of just coaching aspects that we can do. And lastly, here is our website directly. So if you want to learn a little bit more about us, and what we do, what we stand for, pricing information and all of that, you can go ahead and find all of that here. But um, John, you want to talk a little bit more outside of LinkedIn, what else you can kind of do for your clients in your sessions and then about how many spots you will have open to take on your clients at the moment? Absolutely. So right now, uh, I'm going to say between, uh, between two and four client slots. And the reason I'll say between two and four is we do have Two different cadences some clients meet with me twice a month and some meet with me four times a month so depending on that i have about that much availability in my calendar uh, obviously i do more than linkedin we kind of stay very fo laser focused on this particular call but i do everything from career exploration to tactical job hunt tips to crafting excellent applications to interview prep uh, i do a lot of negotiation coaching to make sure that when you do get that opportunity it's the opportunity that you want and you craft it into that uh and that's probably Everything I just said is probably 40%. The other 60% is career navigation and crafting, meaning what are you doing once you're there? You've got the job, great. All of this is up front, but this is a small part of your journey. Most of your career will not be spent in transition. Most of your career will be spent in a role. How are you maximizing at that role? How are you getting everything you want? How are you getting to the level you want? And most importantly, how is that career serving the life that you want? That has to come before everything else. 
We do not engage with careers for the sake of engaging with careers. We do them as a means to support the life we want to live and the world we want to live in. How do we do all that together? Oh, thank you, Gary. How do we do all that together? This is what I talk about. Um, in fact, I want to share a very quick anecdote about that. Uh, and I swear, Justice, he's like rolling his eyes. I swear it's quick. I had, I had a um, consult with someone who was telling me he loved his work. He adored his work. He felt it, it's what he always wanted to do his whole life. Then he did it. And he was right, right? It's just that kind of perfect storm. Um, he was well-respected in his industry. He was well-compensated in his industry. He was well-regarded in his industry. And yet, every day before logging in, he said he was stressed out of his mind and looking for excuses not to do it. Why? He couldn't understand why. It had not always been that way. When he first started uh, with his company, everything felt great. I said, and nothing's changed. Everyone, if anything, things have only gotten better. I, I'm paid more. I, you know, my, uh, I have a better reputation. People love me. Why? And I said, I'm going to ask a few questions. How long have you been with your company? He said, 11 years. I said, now, forgive me for assuming, but just based on some things I can see in the background, I see some toys. You have kids? I said, yes. How many? Two. How old? Five and three. I said, five and three? I said, so 11 years ago, you joined this company. Everything was great. Then in the past 11 years, you, you got married, became a dad, became a dad again. You work with West Coast clients. You're on the East Coast. You're working until eight, nine o'clock, and you're wondering why you're stressed? job didn't change. You changed. Your life changed. Got kids in the next room saying, you know, daddy, why aren't you coming to dinner with us? Your life will change. Your life is going to have huge swings in what you're interested in, what you care about. And I'm not saying this is not me saying, oh, when you have kids, you have to quit your career. No way. But it's me saying, you cannot assume that anything will be perfect forever. You cannot assume that you can coast. You cannot assume that once you have found one perfect job, it's perfect forever and that you will stop having to put effort into this. No, nothing is automatic and no one outside of you, and of course they will care about it enough. Your, your managers, your employers, even really great teams will care about your work, but not the whole arc of your career. That has to be you. So that right there is what I help my clients with. How do we maximize on that? How do we make sure that the career is coming along for the life ride, not the other way around. We're not fitting in our life around the cracks and edges of our career, but we're doing the opposite. Um, but how do we do that and still be successful? How do we do that and still maximize on all of these values? So that is a little sample of what it's like to work with. Thank you so much, three John. Minutes. And so, three minutes. Yep, yep. Now we have some time for um, question and answer. If anyone wants to type something in there or if you're comfortable enough to come off of you, and you're more welcome to and ask your question. So the time is yours. And I did, by the way, just before everyone jumps off, I posted at the very beginning of the chat, I posted a link to a LinkedIn post that I made for everyone on this call because I've seen this happen before and it's such a shame. We all get together on a job search networking LinkedIn webinar and we don't connect with each other. Everyone else on this webinar is a potential helpful resource to you. So I, I put a link to a single post where you can all come in and link and comment and share yourselves and introduce yourselves to one another and say hi. Uh, and then uh, you can also follow and connect with me. I will accept all connection requests uh, on LinkedIn. I am not selective at all. So by all means, if you've been here, that's more than good enough for me. Uh, and abs absolutely. So uh, I'm just going to answer some questions I see in chat if uh, nobody is popping off. But Jason, John, John we have one. One came oh, we do? Oh. Yes, we do. Um, what's the difference between following versus connecting with someone on LinkedIn? Oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, following is permissionless. Meaning you don't have to, I, I don't have to approve. You could follow me right now. I don't have to approve of it. Um, it means that you will see everything I post if you follow me, but I won't see anything you post. So it's not, it's not mutual, but it doesn't require permission. Connecting requires permission. Both parties have to agree. And now we are both following each other. So Justice and I are connected on LinkedIn, meaning everything he posts, I see. Everything I post, he sees. It also means we can freely message one another. Um, if I were to just follow Justice, I would see everything he posts, but he won't see anything I post, um, and I can't uh, automatically message him. You can only freely message people that you are connected with, although little secret cheat and workaround, if you send a connection request, you can attach a message to it. So if you really want to direct message someone, that's the way to secretly do it. But you can talk publicly to anyone. That's the other reason to sort of talk publicly. You can only direct message your own connections, but someone that I have no connection to that posts publicly, I can comment on their post and start a conversation. 
All right. Any other questions? Uh, do you want to scroll through and see if you see one? Let's see. I, I did. So, I will there be more LinkedIn sessions? Yes. Stay tuned because we're always doing this kind of stuff, right? We're and, and on a wide variety of topics. We also have a couple different LinkedIn um, sessions on the YouTube channel already. We have some really great blog content about LinkedIn, including one of the articles that I wrote that I'm going to have Justice send out with the recap email. Uh, so yes, we we definitely are very uh, frequent believers in the LinkedIn system. So absolutely. Uh, and then going off of that, um, here is the link to our Eventbrite page that has all of our upcoming webinars. We had things kind of up into uh, mid uh, mid March, I believe. So yeah. So if you are interested, here is the link for that, and feel free to attend anything in the future. And of course, if you want more personalized and customized help, hey, let me know. Questions. Does anybody need any other links again before I jump off? I mean, we're running right at time. So I'm more than happy to share something again. But again, everything's we're running right at time. <laughs> Come on now. Big accomplishment for me. Okay, running right at time. High five. <laughs> But everything will be sent in the follow-up email for everybody here. So you'll have that. Um, and if you do lose that, it is our YouTube page as well. Oh, we do have one more question that came through. How do we see all those links later on? They're sent in the follow-up email. They're all listed out there as the blog posts, all, all the ALV things you would need to know, and, and the console thing. So everything will be sent in the email within about 24 hours, I believe. And I think that if you follow along the recorded video, chat is recorded too, if I believe. No, so I think that sure on that one. I'm not 100 percent I think so. <laughs> um, but wh whether or not it is, and if you lose anything, uh, reach out to us, right? You can email me, you can email Justice, you can email anybody at Avalavita, and we'll send the stuff back out to you. It's not hidden. Go, uh, go to ALBcoaching.com, poke around, it's more follow threads and rabbit holes, uh, and you will find anything you want. With that being said, thank you everybody so much for spending your time with us on your Wednesday. Happy hump day and enjoy the weather and stay warm and safe. Bye everybody. Thank you.